All right, so today what we are going to do is we are going to talk about what is statistics and what is a statistical process, okay? Now, before we get into that too much, what I want to do is show you where on the slick page you can find everything that you need to find for this. And I also wanted to go over a couple of things that I noticed on the slick website that hopefully you noticed too, but maybe it didn't. So we're going to go to the slick canvas page. This is slcc.instructure.com. Don't go to the granite one. This already has all your resources on it and I can't copy it from one to the other because they're different platforms. So, all right. So we're going to go to you guys, 1040. And I'll show you where you can find your guided notes and all the fun stuff like that. So right here, um, this is a syllabus link. You click that to find the syllabus. Textbook, you click there and you can download it and then guided lectures. There's two ways you can find it. Probably the easiest way is just to click on the chapter we're working on, which is chapter one. You click on chapter one and it brings up everything from chapter one down here, okay? So now if you click on the chapter one, 1 1.1, so section one in chapter one, um, it has a couple of things here, like just an introduction. We're actually going to watch this video um, and then it will have the guided notes. Now we're going to watch that video after I show you something about the guided lecture notes. I don't know if any of you went through this on your own already, but if not, I'm going to show you. So I would just download them. This is going to be for all of chapter one. I'll print these off for you for next week um, when I actually get to see you guys for Monday. But for now, I just wanted you to see where they are because they added something that wasn't in there last time. They actually have the first four or five pages is dedicated to kind of helping you be a good student. So it's got this video here and you watch it and it teaches you about learning styles. Now, when I tried to click on the link, it told me it was private and maybe that's because I'm not signed in in my slick YouTube account. So I was gonna see if it shows as private for you guys. So maybe one of you guys can try to see if you can watch it because it wouldn't let me. But then it's talking about learning styles. It gives you a link where you can better understand how you learn and uh, so you can be more successful in this class, okay? It also has some like study tips and gives you a, a calendar for you to kind of start figuring out when can I actually make time to study for this class, okay? Gives another video you can watch about time management. A lot of you guys are involved in a lot of extracurriculars. So it would be good for you to, kind of sit down and think, okay, if I'm involved in student government and sports and all these other things, when am I going to find time and like figuring out the best way to do that? And there's also some good tips that you can use and um, more like information and all this great stuff that's good for you to know. Also things like growth mindset, like trying to um, always be learning and trying to get to where you need to get great things for you to like be figuring out okay so now that was all before you get to chapter one because most of that was what you needed to do on your own okay so again that's just in your guided notes which you can find on the slick canvas page and that's what i'm going to ask that you try to do on your own because the more you can figure out how you're going to manage your time and how you can best learn the material and be thinking about your own thinking, the more successful you'll be, okay? All right, so let me actually jump back. I want to watch this video with you. It's only three minutes, but I think it's valuable. Um, but I'm going to ask, when I tried to show a video while Zooming yesterday, it was all choppy. So Megan, you're, you're the one that I see on my screen. So if we if it's good, you're gonna give me a thumbs up. And if it's like choppy or the sounds weird, you're gonna give me a thumbs down and you guys will just watch it on your own. Okay. So in high school I never even heard of statistics. Six. And I knew I liked math. 
and I knew I liked science. In high school, I went to a conservatory for music. I was a viola performance major. When I started college, I was taking a bunch of math and economics classes. And then in my junior year, I took a probability and statistics class. I remember sitting there in the classroom thinking, wow, this is a really interesting problem. And he's using statistics and probability theory to try to solve it. Statistics is amazing because it has many diversifications. From search results on Google or Bing to information technology shopping for on Amazon. If you're watching a YouTube video and at the end you get recommendations for other videos, statistics were used to give you those recommendations. I've seen statistics in ice skating, I've seen statistics in agriculture, I mean, I've seen, seen statistics um, in climate control. I mean, statistics can actually be anything that you like, anything that you enjoy, anything that you want to do, anything that you're passionate about, you can you know, take statistics and it fits. I'm very lucky to get to use statistics to answer some of the questions that I think are the most important questions about social justice and human rights violations. And on my best days, I get to spend the majority of my day doing data analysis to answer questions for the United Nations, to contribute evidence to war crimes trials. As a part of my PhD, I created a statistical software package and Google emails me every time someone uses it. And people have used it to analyze DNA and find genes that are related to cancer. It's basically been used in the food pyramid. You know what I mean? When we come up with suggestions, you know, of what you should eat and how much of it you should eat, we try those things using statistics. Statistics is critical for everybody entering the workforce because so much of industry and government and everything today is data driven. Just like it's important that we all know how to read, we all need to know statistics. Look around you. Everywhere you are, there's data, there's information. Whatever your passions are, statistics will be involved. We are producing so much data these days. Regardless of the field that you pursue, whether it is astronomy, criminal justice, and medicine, going forward, you've got to know citizens. All right, cool, cool. So could you guys see that and you're happy with that? Let me get back to where I can actually see you guys. Where'd you go? I want to stop sharing for a second so I can see. It. Okay, so could you hear it? Could you see it? All right, so statistics is the bomb diggity, okay? You should like it. The other thing is not only is it good because you can use it in your field, but you're going to be bombarded with statistics in your life. And so being able to understand those, but also to know if they're reliable statistics or not is a good skill to have as well. Okay, now Raleigh, you asked a great question. Um, he said, is the, statistic, is the guided notes, uh, am I going to grade them? And the answer is no. This is just for you and your own note taking and helping you understand, but I would highly, highly, highly recommend it. Like I expect you to take it and to do it but I'm not going to be grading it. So great question. Um, let's move on to now actually getting into our lesson. Okay. So today, pretty basic. We're just going to define what is statistics and also what is a process of statistical investigation? Just kind of the big picture, what are we doing here with statistics, okay? Now, I wanna just relate this to an example. Spider-Man, No Way Home. First off, I haven't seen it yet, so don't spoil it, dang it. If any of you spoil it, you get an F. I'm gonna watch it, hopefully. I keep saying I'm gonna watch it soon, but then I keep wanting to go and watch all the old ones. And so, anyway, here's a question. Have you guys seen it? Why don't you just put in the chat yes or no? Have you seen Spider-Man No Way Home? No spoilers, just yes or no. So I'm hoping to get about 16 yeses or nos in that chat. So let me start here. So I'm gonna do this real quick. So I'm gonna keep track of the number of yeses. So Genesis was a yes. Oh my goodness, come on. 
Spencer's a yes. Dela's a yes. Megan is a yes. Mikel is a yes. Paige, Emma, and Connor are all, well, Connor's a ye. I think that means yes. Okay. Hannah and Raleigh is twice. Only going to count you once, but that's cool. 11. So what we have right now is we have 11 out of 16 people in our class have seen Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, let's say I want big picture here. What proportion of Hunter students have seen it? In our class, we had 11 out of 16, which I actually don't know what that percentage is. Let's just leave it as 11 over 16. Would we expect that same proportion of Hunter students to have seen Spider-Man No Way Home? Do we think it'll be more? Do we think it'll be less? How could we find out what proportion of Hunter students have seen it? And what are some challenges we might face in that process? So this is supposed to be kind of a discussion. And I know it's easier to have discussions in person, but I want some of you to just unmute and tell me, what do you think? How would we figure out that proportion? And what are some challenges? Just share some thoughts. Well, this is going to get awkward real quick because I'm just going to sit here until you guys start talking. So just do it sooner than later so we don't just sit here in awkward silence. Um, I would say the challenges would be trying to get every single student in Hunter because you can't get everyone. Yeah. And I mean, so like, you need to figure out how to like do in small groups. All right. Because Yeah, if we think about it, Hunter has plus... 2,500 students, let's just say that, okay? And especially in a pandemic, right? Where in my classes, I have anywhere between like five to 10% of my students are missing because of quarantine or they're positive for COVID. So it's like, how on earth would you ask everyone? Even if I send an email to everyone, they're not all gonna respond. So how do I track down the people that didn't? So I like what you said there, Tao. Instead of doing everyone, why don't we do small groups? Um, first off, let's go over just some things we'll learn in the future. What, what is it called when we ask every single person a question? So you can put it in the chat. You can unmute. What is that? Anybody know? We do it every 10 years. There we go. Thanks, Genesis. Yes, census is correct. So if we are going to ask every single person, that's a census. And we only do it every 10 years because it takes so long to do it. Back in the day when they first started doing censuses, it would take them like six years just to have compiled, gathered all the data and start to look at it because it was just so laborious. And most countries are getting rid of that. So now, Tao, you talked about doing small groups. What's the vocab word we would use there? We kind of talked about it in 1030. So maybe for new students, they might not know it unless they go to Costco. A sample? There we go. Good job. So a sample is when we're going to ask just a smaller group. But then again, how do we choose our sample? How do we make sure that sample reflects the overall population? Again, that's a challenge we're going to face. We'll talk more about that in the future. Okay, so let's talk about just a couple of um, vocab words. So data is going to be the observations collected from field notes, from surveys, from experiments. So our data is our observations. Okay, and here's our definition of statistics. Statistics is a study of how to best collect, analyze, and draw conclusions from that data, which is our observations. Okay. So in this last example, we just talked about Spider-Man. What is our data? Someone just unmute or put it in the chat. What's our data from Spider-Man? Don't overthink it. It's not that hard. It was just whether you've seen it or not, right? And in our class, we had 11 out of 16 who had seen it. And if we were going to ask everyone at Hunter, have you seen Spider-Man or not? 
then it would be the proportion of people who have seen it or the proportion of people who have not seen it. Now, the way we would design how to collect and analyze and draw conclusions, that would be the idea of statistics. Okay, so now on this page, it's just kind of a lot of information, but this is the whole process of statistical investigation. I'm going to actually go back to this picture. Do you see this picture right here on this website? Oh, where'd you go, picture? You can see that, right, Mikhail? Okay, cool. So those are our six steps of how we're going to um, go about in the statistical process. So the first step is identify a question or problem. Once we've done that, then we're gonna design a study and collect data. Then we describe the data. We perform a statistical analysis, make inference in context, and contemplate and consider. So those are the six steps. And if you're filling in your notes, that's what you'd write down. But let's, let's actually go back to our notes and we're going to go in a little more detail, but I don't want to have to read these. So I'm gonna give you guys a number and you're gonna read it. So Mikkel, you're gonna take one. Dela, you're taking two. Tau, three. Page, four. Genesis, five. And Megan, six. All right. Again, I'll just say that one more time and then we'll read. So Mikkel, one. Dela, two. Tau, three. Page four, Genesis five, and Megan six. So let me go back to full screen so we can see that. Go ahead, unmute, and just read your number. Identify a question or problem. Think about what information would answer the question or solve the problem. Design a study and collect relevant data on the topic. Plan an appropriate and valid way to select individuals to study and obtain the information you need. Describe the data. Summarize the collected data using tables or graphs and numbers. Oh man, I don't remember who was for. Is that Paige? Paige, are you there? All right, I'll be Paige for a second. Use statistical methods to analyze the collected data. Many statistical methods are discussed in this book. Make inferences in context. Form conclusions and make decisions based on collected data that can be applied to a larger, more general situation. Contemplate and consider. Contemplate any limitations to what we've done and consider what adjustments should be made in future studies. Okay, so now this is a process that people are going to go through for statistics, and it's what they do in a whole variety of ways, like they were talking about. They see statistics in relation to ice skating or in relation to like um, war crimes and refugees, and like everything relates to statistics. And anytime that we see a problem or there's a question we're trying to find an answer to, we go through this process, okay? Okay, no worries, Paige. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how this process works in relation to one of my favorite series, which is called Parks and Rec. I'm gonna ask you again, go in the chat and you're gonna put yes or no. Have you watched at least some of Parks and Rec? If you've seen at least three episodes, we'll put a yes. If you've seen less or none, then put no. I'm just curious how much Parks and Rec you guys have actually seen. So I need to go, um, but now I'm confused at where we left off and where the other ones began. But I'm seeing a whole lot of no's, except for Megan. Megan's a yes. All right. So lots of no's here. A couple of yeses. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So let me give you a quick summary of Parks and Rec. How this begins. First off, you might recognize this dude down here. That is Chris Pratt in his pre-Guardians of the Galaxy day. So in this sitcom, he's actually kind of like a fat slob. <laughs> but then he kind of cleans up and turns into this like hunky guy for like Avengers, but whatever. So how this starts out where Parks and Rec takes place in this small town called Pawnee, Indiana. Okay. And here is this pit. 
there's this construction pit where they started to build like I forget what it is like a factory or warehouse but then they ran out of funding and so it's just an abandoned pit well Andy Dwyer this guy right here late one night he fell in the pit and he broke both of his legs so his girlfriend Ann Perkins she is pictured right here with the brunette there she goes to the government the city and was like hey what's with this pit you guys need to fill this in it's a danger to our community okay so leslie nope she's like the main character here she decides hey what if we get we turn that park or that pit into a park because she works in the parks and rec department so she's like hey let's make it a park but she knows that in order to get funding they have to get the neighborhood behind them so they need to have statistical evidence that the community wants it to be a park not just that the government wants it to be a park but that the community does so they go and they start going door to door trying to get people to um support this park initiative okay that's basically the first episode or two now i would recommend that you guys do a, a seven day trial of peacock and actually watch the first few episodes because a it's funny it actually gets better as you get further into it but b it teaches you things like this statistical process. If we go back to it, number one, identify the question or problem. Well, there's this pit and they're trying to turn it into a park, okay? So in order to do that, they need to get funding or funding from the government, but in order to get funding from the government, they have to get um, enough of the public to support the initiative. So they've got to go and collect data. Now, the other thing that's interesting is it, they actually acknowledge that they try to like manipulate people into like favoring the park. And we'll talk about that again, a different lesson, but you'll see that if you watch it. And then once they gather that, they can describe it, analyze it, and then try to use that to make inferences and say, so if of the people we talk to 20% or let's say a higher number, 60% support a park, does that mean 60% of the whole town supports it? And so it depends on how you took your samples. And so they could contemplate and consider and decide what to do. Okay, so that's kind of a fun example of how we would do that. So your homework is to go watch Parks and Rec, season one, okay? It's good stuff. Now let's talk about a little bit more serious of an event or of a statistical process. That was from your reading. You were supposed to read the case study about the stents to prevent strokes. So here's what I'm going to ask is I actually need someone to be brave and unmute and kind of summarize what the reading was about and how it showed the statistical process. So I'm just going to sit here awkwardly until you guys unmute and tell me about your reading. Would it help if I started randomly calling on people? All right, let's see. Kimberly, you just want to take this. I can see it. What do you think? Did you do the reading, Kimberly? Yeah, I did. Awesome. So, um, like you said, it's a study about... Um, seeing if stents will prevent um, um, strokes. And so they got um, a sample pop a sample size and then so they gave like half of the <clears throat> volunteers the stint. No, they gave all the wait, I don't remember. So they gave some um, volunteers the stint and they got like um, and they had like resources to help them like be healthier and then the other people they just had the stint and no resources and other way they... around so they all got the resources but only half got the stint oh, okay but good job. You got it. and then so they just compared who had strokes after like a month and then like a year awesome thank you kimberly now, I'm going to go back in case people are like, I don't even know what a stent is, okay? So, 
in a heart attack, like what happens, that's where you're like, there's a blockage, okay? In, in your vein or an artery, I forget which one is which, I'm not an anatomy teacher, but the one, there's a blockage which prevents blood from getting to your brain and so, or your heart, I don't know. I shouldn't explain this, <laughs> but there's a blockage. And so they put in this tiny little um, mesh kind of thing that expands your, um, expands your veins so that there's, there's not a blockage, okay? So it kind of expands your veins. That's what a stent is. So the picture does a better job of showing what it is. So they said, would this also help with strokes? So they do an experiment, just like Kimberly said, but what's crazy is the results, okay? So they gave half of them stents and half of them didn't get it, but they all got like healthy lifestyle guidance. What was the conclusion? Someone unmute and tell me, what did they see from this? Oh man, guys, this is discouraging. Did you not do your reading or are you just being shy? Because if, if you're being shy, get over it. But if you didn't do your reading, then dang it, do your reading. Well, I'll just tell you. Basically, what they found was they found that the people who got the stints were actually more likely to get a stroke. I think they said it was higher by 8% when they compared the two groups that the group that had the stints were 8% more likely to have a stroke. Now, part of the consider and contemplate is we have to say, could that 8% just have happened by chance? Or was that large enough that it was actually showing a cause and effect? Was it statistically significant? And we'll talk more about what that means later as well. So in the end, what they were able to do is they looked at a summary statistic. This is a single number, number summarizing a sample of data. And basically they were able to look at the total proportion of people who got, um, who had strokes with or without the stints and compared them. And they were able to see the difference of 8%. So interesting. So this is a more serious kind of real life application of the statistical process. Okay. Now let's just go through one with us in the class here. Okay. And then that's about it. We're just going to do one more. Okay, so according to a Harris poll, 45% of Americans have brown eyes. Does the proportion of people with brown eyes in our class support this claim? So we're gonna collect data. Again, go in the chat. You're either gonna put if you have brown or if you have non-brown. So brown would be brown and non-brown would be blue or green or what other colors suffice? Black would be non-brown. Let's see. So everyone go in there and you're either going to put brown or non-brown. Okay. So, and there are 16 of you. So I'm going to just look at the people with brown eyes. So Genesis has brown eyes. Anthony has brown eyes. Tao has brown eyes. Kimberly has brown eyes, Hannah doesn't. Connor has blue, so non-brown, non-brown. Ashley has brown eyes, Dela has brown eyes. Non-brown, 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 non-brown. And Landon has brown eyes. Okay, so assuming that everyone participated there, and I hope you did, I didn't count them all, I got seven out of 16. So I'm actually gonna hurry and pull up the calculator. Let's see what that is. Uh, that's 43.75. Is that pretty dang close to 45%? Yeah, that's not too bad. So I'm gonna hurry and some, fill in our information there. So we when we have our completed notes, we know what it was. Okay, so coming back here. So we said seven did, and that means nine didn't. So 
we had seven out of 16, which is 45%, or it was 0.4375, I think. Is it exactly 45%? No, not necessarily, but do we expect it to be exactly 45%? Does it seem close enough that the difference is just due to chance? What do you guys think? Are we ever gonna get it exactly 45? I don't know. Those are all questions to just be considering. Now, is there anything about our study that should make us think twice about our conclusion? Here's a question that I just wanna leave you with for this one. Is our class pretty representative? Like who is our population? Who is this even asking about, okay? It was talking about Americans. So we only have 16 people in here, but let's talk about these 16 people. Do we represent the American population? I want you guys to either put in the chat or to unmute and tell me how are you different than our population than just Americans in general. Okay, let me try to rephrase it. If I were to take a random sample of Americans and then compare them to you guys, how would you look different or be different than just a random sample of Americans. Okay, let's see what you said. Someone in the chat. Age, hey, that's a great one. You guys are all high school students, so you're less than 18. Is that a difference? Absolutely, that could make a difference, okay? Someone else give me a different, different way we could be different. Ages, great. Ethnicity, that's a great one. Do, does our class represent the same proportion of ethnicities? We've got some diversity in our class, but does it still match up with the overall diversity? No, and would that make a difference with eye color? Yeah, sure. So when we're doing our statistics, we always need to be wise about it by looking at where did the data come from and does it match, okay? So with that in mind, I want you to just kind of think about this for a second. Do you feel like you understand what statistics is? Do you feel like you understand the process of statistical investigation? Try to just in your own brain, summarize what both of those are. If you need to use definitions, you can. We're gonna wrap this up for today and say you guys are good to go. What you need to do is you need to do the 1.1 online homework, which you can find on the Slick Canvas page. Um, let me just show you where that is, because that'll be just real easy for me to show you. And then you need to read 1.2. Now, this is assuming that you've done the orientation module, which I don't think should have taken very long. I think most of you, more than half of you got that done already. If you didn't do the orientation module, then you need to do that. If you didn't read 1.1, we'll go back and read that. But what you, assuming you have done that, what you need to do before class on Monday is the 1.1 homework, the 1.2 reading, and that should be good. So here's 1.1. Let me just go back home so I can show you. You guys can see my screen, right? Mikhail, you can see the screen? Okay, cool. So I'm gonna click on chapter one, introduction to data. And the assignment will be just like the assignment was for your um, orientation, where it was just kind of that online. So there's your 1.1 homework. And then if you click on the 1.2 data basics, you'll find the guided notes. It's actually just the same packet that we are in. We're just gonna do the next page. We may even get started on 1.3. So if you're like wanting to read two sections, go for it. Um, but we might just do one. We'll see what happens. All right, so do you guys have any questions? OK, 
Okay, well, thank you for being here this Friday morning. It's going to be a short weekend because I'm going to see you on Monday, right? So it'll be pretty quick. So make sure you do those things. If you don't have questions, you're free to go. I do need to talk to Paige. I don't see Shannon or Darlene. So just Paige, if you'll stick around or anyone else who has questions, stick around and then have a good weekend. See you Monday. All right, Paige, you there? Can you hear me? If uh, you're not able to unmute or whatever, you can just use the chat if that works. Okay, so on my list, you're not in on the Slick website yet. Like you haven't registered. Do you know how to register? Okay, I got my phone to unmute. Oh, good. This will be easier. Okay. Um, so I tried to register and I thought I did, but my mom got an email saying that I wasn't able to because my 10th grade math teacher gave me a P when we were in quarantine and didn't change it. Um, but she said she got it fixed, so I should be able to register now. I don't know if I need to like try to go register again or if they'll just yeah um, i think you would need to that's okay. kind of frustrating because you're in 10 30 so it's like you fit it's the same requirements for 10 40 as 10 30 so i'm like why did why are they giving you grief okay so do you know what the crn number is and do you have those instructions for registering yeah okay do me a favor if you can just in the next like half hour or so just try to go through and do it. And if it gives you errors or if you get stuck, email me and let me know. Um, and if you're able to register, then great, you're in. But if not, then I will email some people and make sure we get this figured out, okay? All right, thank you. Okay, cool. Thanks, Paige. Have a good thank weekend. You too. Kate, are you there? Kate, can you hear me? You can hear me, Kate? Hello? Um. Hey, so our, we're on Friday schedule. So we're actually going to be starting at 947. That makes sense. So Alrighty. let me let me just make sure I told you the right time. Give me 10 seconds. You're my two way, right? Yeah. So 947. So you've got about a half hour and then okay. come back on. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks, Kate.